show money. Easy Gore being brought into the saddling area, as is Sunday Silence. And the drama of that duel, two of the great horses of this decade, will be played again in about a half an hour. Same park to the paddock area, the Bald Eagle, Charlie Winningham, the Hall of Fame trainer of Sunday Silence. He said, uh, they just came to me and said, uh, you want a little piece of this uh, horse, Sunday Silence? We can't seem to sell it. The best bid we could get is $17,000 on this athletic-looking uh, colt. He said, sure, why not? I'll pitch in with you and put in uh, $50,000, then sold half of his half for $25,000, and happy that uh, he was part of the company. Sunday Silence, the underdog in the Derby and the Preakness, the winner on both occasions. Then as the favorite, it was Easy Goer, the underdog who won the Belmont. It'll be quite a duel. The Breeders' Cup Classic, a classic confrontation. From the East, representing racing's establishment, Easy Gore, and the Western upstart, Sunday Silence. Easy Gore has the most fashionable pedigree a horse can have, by one of the top sires, Alidar, and from the champion mare, relaxing. Sunday Silence is not from championship stock. His sire, Halo, has been a leading sire, but he's no blue blood. Easy Gore was champion at two, and the favorite for the Kentucky Derby. But it was the horse out of California who took home the Roses. In the Preakness, Easy Goer took the lead, but Sunday Silence on the outside came to get him for a narrow victory. But Easy Goer spoiled the Triple Crown bid by Sunday Silence, breezing home by himself in the Belmont Stakes. Since the Belmont, Easy Goer has been unbeatable. He's now won five in a row, including the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Meanwhile, Sunday Silence has had mixed success. This is the Swap Stakes, his first start since losing the Triple Crown, and Prize nails him at the wire. This is also a rivalry between jockeys. Pat Day, who rides Easy Gore, has developed into one of the top two or three riders in the world. Well known in the Midwest, he burst upon the national scene with a winning ride on Wild again in the rough finish of the first Breeders' Cup Classic. On Sunday Silence for the first time will be Chris McCarran, inducted into Racing's Hall of Fame this year. His world record of 546 victories in one year still stands. And like Day, he has won Eclipse Awards as top jockey. The jockey story also includes Patrick Valenzuela, the regular rider on Sunday Silence. After not showing up to fulfill his riding obligations for several days, the Santa Anita stewards ordered a drug test. After a positive finding, they set Valenzuela down for 60 days, preventing him from riding anywhere until after Christmas. So McCarran picks up the mount, hoping to duplicate his classic victory aboard Ali Sheba. I'm very excited about it. Um, it's a, it certainly is a legitimate rivalry. They're both very talented horses, and uh, I, I'm tickled to death to be in a position where I can show everybody that Sunny Silence is a better horse. This is also a classic trainer matchup. Shug McGahee is the hottest young trainer in the land, moving from Kentucky to New York to revive the fortunes of the famous Fifth Stable. His adversary is already a legend. Hall of Fame trainer Charlie Whittingham is still going strong in his 76th year. And he thinks Sunday Silence is the best of his many great horses. After the upset to prize in the swaps, he equipped Sunday Silence with a shadow roll. And the Colt won the Super Derby by six lengths. In the swaps in California, he would come, he'd come into the stretch and he opened up five lengths and he saw whether the gate had been pulled across and they raked it not real good and he cropped from it. But when Patrick hit him, he ducked away from being hit and the other horse just caught him beating him out of neck. And in the mornings, he'd, he'd duck and jump things sometimes if he saw it, so I thought a shadow roll might help him out. A little while making up my mind to put it on because I don't like to change things too much. Though they are rivals, McGahee and Whittingham are friendly rivals with respect for each other. The rivalry between easygoers owner Ogden Phipps and Arthur Hancock, one of the owners of Sunday Silence, has not always been so cordial. Easy Gore is the product of decades of successful thoroughbred breeding by Ogden Phipps. His family has been in racing and breeding for most of the century. Former chairman of the Jockey Club, Ogden Phipps is one of the world's most important racing figures. 
He keeps his horses at the famed Claiborne Farm in Kentucky, built by Bull Hancock into the world's foremost breeding establishment. But when Bull died, the estate's executors, on the advice of Phipps, passed over Arthur Hancock, the oldest son, and awarded the presidency of the farm to Arthur's younger brother, Seth. Arthur Hancock, the admitted black sheep of the family, left Claiborne Farm then, determined to build his own operation. Arthur founded Stone Farm, just down the road from Claiborne. And he built Stone Farm into an operation that did indeed rival Claiborne. He succeeded, breeding and owning two Kentucky Derby winners. And he thinks his dad would be proud now of both his sons. He'd be very proud of Seth for the magnificent job he's done with Claiborne. And I think he'd be proud of me because, you know, we've been fortunate to to do all right too and um, I think he'd be very proud of both of us I think, uh, both of us have done all right and so this race is a classic confrontation on several levels but ultimately a match between two magnificent thoroughbreds who grew up on adjacent farms in Kentucky but now duel for horse of the year I'm in here with Shug McGahee right now, a very tense moment. Let's ask him right away, there is some concern about the track. Jack Van Berg thinks that it might be against Easy Goer. How do you feel, Shug? I don't think so at all. I think his track's in good shape, and I think it'll be fine. Thanks. Thank you. Let's throw it now to Jenny in the paddock. And we see Charlie Whittingham putting the saddle on Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner Sunday Silence, this almost black coat. He is fresh. He's going to meet Easy Goer out of New York. A lot of people saying Easy Goer likes it his way in his state of New York, but Sunday Silence is going to meet her here at Gulfstream, meet him here at Gulfstream. Charlie has put a chamois underneath the saddle towel, and that's a piece of leather that they sometimes dampen to keep the saddle from slipping backward. Right now, he is folding back the chamois and getting ready to put on the overgirth, and we hope to get a word with him. Chris Karen is immediately to my left, and Chris, if, if you could step into the picture here, Chris, we'd like just a moment with you on NBC Sports. Sunday Silence, going to face Easy Go, or any last-minute thoughts for us as you prepare for this classic race? No, I just hope we have some luck, that's all. Uh, I just hope that everybody goes out there and has a nice, clean trip and may the best horse win. Have you discussed strategy with Charlie Whittingham yet? Yes, I have. Uh, he's just going to tell me to let the horse run his race, and uh, hopefully everything will work out well for us. And you've been on the track today. Will it suit Sunday Silence? He's run on just about any kind of track, and he's handled everything very well, so I have a lot of confidence that he's going to handle the track just fine. All right, Chris McCarron, best of luck on Sunday Silence. And, Tom, they have him just about saddled now for the Classic. All right, Jenny, we're with Chris's brother, Greg, and Chris was fairly noncommittal there, Greg. Uh, what has he said in, in private to you about his chances with Sunday Silence? I think he, he thinks he's got a big chance. He was here, oh, about four or five days ago to breeze him, and he thought he went really well. Um, he got more excited after talking with Charlie. The way Charlie has been pumped up for this race the last couple of days, Chris thinks he's got a real big chance. Has he said anything to you about how he expects the race to be run tactically? I don't think so. He, he expects to look for easy go of the whole trip, and, and I'm sure Pat will be doing the same with him. And I think the two of them think it's basically a two-horse race. And I'm sure that one is going to wait for the other one to move and just not let him get away. All right, Dick, the drama builds. Yeah, the betters agree with Greg. Uh, as you look at the current odds and the two favorites head uh, toward their duty. One to two, easy goer. Nine to five, the bottom horse, Sunday Silence. And look at the second or the third favorite is Crypto Clearance at 17 to one. Gives you an idea where the money flow is going. Easy goer and Sunday Silence getting all the attention and the rest of the field of eight almost forgotten in all of the drama as the horse of the year undoubtedly decided by the outcome of the race you're about to see. It's worth $3 million appropriately named the Classic. These moments seem the most dramatic of all. Those few minutes before the horses take to the track, Pat Day aboard Easy Goer, and the number eight ridden by Chris McCarran, Sunday Silence. And Jack Van Berg, you know the feeling best of all. Two years ago, you'd sold Ali Sheba and Ferdinand Nipcha in a brilliant race. And last year, Horse of the Year went with your victory in the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's right, Dick. I know how Shug feels. He's got all the confidence in the world in his horse. He's never uh, let him down. He had a little bit of trouble in the Derby and in the Breeders' Cup, but this horse has run brilliantly lately. He's uh, found himself. He's uh, matured. 
and sugar has got a lot of confidence in him and and this colt uh, could be the best three-year-old for a long time that's come around. Well, what if Sunday Silence year. wins this race? Does well, the I think it would have to go to Sunday Silence then, but I think Shug's got a lot of confidence, but it's still a lot of tension on you when you're coming up them. I got beaten three of those races. Well, who are you picking? Head. Who's your pick? I don't know. It's got so exciting. Come on, you got to pick one. You're not putting me on the line. <laughs> but I, I just, I hope for all of them to get their sound. Now you hear that it's for the $3 million Breeders' Cup Classic sponsored by Mobile. Number one is Easy Goer. If he wins today, he's champion three-year-old, horse of the year, maybe horse of the decade. If he loses to Sunday Silence, he's only the second best three-year-old. But since those losses in the Derby and Preakness, he seems to have reached another plateau. His five consecutive wins have been outstanding. Number two is Present Value. One of his owners, Rich Fontana, manufactures the safety rail used at many racetracks. Eddie Delahousie is riding as well as any jockey in the country right now. He was aboard Present Value in the horse's last race, a driving win in the Goodwood Handicap at Santa Anita. Number three is Crypto Clearance, the quintessential stretch runner. He'll be far back early. Second to Easy Goer in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, Crypto has earned over $3 million and has won two grade one races here at Gulfstream Park. Number four is Me Selecto. This is the horse Chris McCarran was to ride before Pat Valenzuela was suspended. Although picking up Pin Kai should suit him just fine. This horse has won three of his last four races at a mile and a quarter. Number five is Western Playboy. This three-year-old was rated one of the best in the country after winning the Bluegrass Stakes in the spring. He was 9-1 to one against Sunday Silence, an easy goer in the Kentucky Derby. But he was ill and finished last in the Derby. It took a while for him to return to form, but he won the Pennsylvania Derby by 17 lengths. Number six, Slough City Slough looked for this horse to be the early pace setter. He faded to last after prompting the pace for a mile in last year's Classic. However, Slough City Slough was the wire-to-wire -wire winner of the Gulfstream Park Handicap back in February. Number seven, Blushing John. This horse seems to be either very good, like a seven-and-a-half length win in the Washington Park Handicap, or very bad, a 20-length defeat by Mies Selecto in the Meadowlands Cup. Still, he usually runs well following a bad effort. Most handicappers give him the best shot of upsetting the top two today. Completing the field is number eight, Sunday Silence, a horse of destiny if there ever was one. Unwanted and dogged by adversity early in his life, he has settled into a tremendous racehorse. Like Easy Goer, he's never been worse than second. And if his races since the Preakness have not been as spectacular as Easy Goer's, remember the score so far, Sunday Silence 2, Easy Goer 1. And that's the field for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Greg, how do they look? I'll tell you what, it's cooling off a little bit out here, and each and every one of them look terrific. Um, I think one of the things we maybe should notice in this post parade is that Sunday Silence is going to the gate with a halter and a shank. And the shank is up over his lip and underneath the lip, and that's because he used to be very unruly. The, the key to this, though, is that the halter is encircling the reins, so if something was to happen, Chris would have very little control. So to alleviate that problem, they have remade this halter with a Velcro pull-off, and as soon as Chris snugs on the reins, if he was to get away from the pony, everything should be all right. It's the feeling of a great heavyweight championship fight. The two outstanding contenders separated by six outstanding horses in their own right. The number one in the front, Pat Day, easy goer. Is that symbolic? Or will Sunday Silence, the horse that trailed so much of his career unwanted, show that he is best of all? The answer follows mile and a quarter classic American distance. Our rivals, Easy Goer and Sunday Silence, have the advantage of being versatile. They have the ability to lay close to the pace, and they have the quality to pay strongly in the stretch reasons for their success. Some feel that Chris McCarran on Sunday Silence may have a slight strategic edge in starting from the outside over Pat Day, who was in the post position one on Easy Goer. We'll see in that first turn, and there are the current odds. Again, easy goer, odds on at 3-5, to five, and Sunday Silence at 9-5. to five. Not much change there, but to show you how the crowd here favors those two, if you're going to take an exact bet of 1-8, and eight, uh, you, $5.20 will be your return on a $2 bet. 8-1 to one if you go the other way on the Perfecta Sunday Silence on top. So much the favorite are these two. Well, we'll talk about them some more, but there must be someone else in this race. Okay, you know all about the big two. Can anyone else win? Trainer Gil Roundtree thinks Me Selecto can. And he looked good in the mile and a quarter Meadowlands Cup under the lights three weeks ago in New Jersey. He drew clear by two. 
But remember, there were no easy goers or Sunday silences in this race, though blushing John was, winding up seventh. What about present value? He's now won two in a row and five of his last six. His last effort came in the Goodwood handicap at Santa Anita. Driving down the lane, he pulled away to win by just over a length. This is the same race Ferdinand used as a springboard to a classic victory in 1987. Flushing John has looked like a world beater at times. A classic winner in France last year at three. He's been inconsistent in the States, beaten 20 links in the Meadowlands Cup. This was one of his better efforts. He was challenged in the stretch of the mile and a quarter Hollywood Gold Cup, but held on to win. In addition to the stars, there's another three-year-old today. Western Playboy was 15th and last in the Kentucky Derby, but he had a hock infection. He's back now, tiptoeing to a 17-link win in the Pennsylvania Derby, his last start. So, can anyone beat the top two? Nah, forget it. Make your exacta easy goer Sunday silent. A note on easy goer campaigning primarily in the East. Easy goer the odds on has won only one time in four races outside of New York, and that win was here at Gulfstream Park. Sunday silence as you look at the winner's share of that three million dollars purse and the payoff all the way down to sixth place. Sunday silence a sleek athletic kind of a wide receiver football look against the fullback linebacker type easy goer you look down the path that they eventually will take in the mile and a quarter and pat day perhaps thinking of that very first breeders cup classic remember that shot of him with his whip held high as he won the surprising victory aboard wild again and you can feel the tension <laughs> building here at gulfstream park and sunday silence perhaps as close as they'll be most of the rest of the time we watch them as they load the gate and when they break you won't see too much distance between the two jack i think they'll have their eyes on one another i think both of them dick will stay pretty close together and watch each other i don't think they'll let one get away i think you'll see the two horses ride together through the whole race and not paying much attention to the other horses in front of them they'll watch each other you know, this race has never failed to deliver a thrill as Shug McGahee bides his time waiting for the start. In the first five runnings, two were decided by a head margin, one by only a nose. That was Ferdinand over Ali Sheba, as Jack Van Berg remembers well. You see Charlie Whittingham looking out to the track, watching Sunday silence as he begins his walk toward the starting gate, loading into that outside post position. Greg McCarron, you can feel the tension here in the crowd. The announcers are tense. The riders have to be a little on edge. Do the horses sense it, do you think? They should do, and, and I think one of the biggest keys here is just watching both Chris and Pat just sitting as calmly as they possibly can. Chris just took his feet out of the irons, and they're both trying to get their horses just to be as relaxed because you don't want them too geared up uh, to go this mile and a quarter. And uh, I, I think one of the funniest things I've seen was everybody had galloped back except Sunday Silence and Easy Goer, and they both walked back to the post parade. They both walked right by in front of me, and, and it was almost like everybody had to wait for these two. I mean, it was neat. You know, Greg, usually you see a lot of kidding, a lot of talking between the jockeys back and forth as they warm up and start to walk to the gate. I didn't see any of that here. This is where you really see the game faces. I mean, the only one out here, and, and it's kind of a funny story, is Angel Cadero. He's laughing and singing, and he's rode 10 races today. And believe it or not, he's 45 years old, but he gets pumped up for these. But the rest of them have that stern, concentrated look, and, and they're just ready, ready to go. All right, the horses now are getting ready to go behind the gate and load for this mile and a quarter Breeders' Cup Classic. Let's check in now with uh, our other commentators for their thoughts. Trevor Denman. Well, this really is a connoisseur's delight out here. We have Easy Goer and Sunday Silence, both of them 100% in the post parade. Easy Goer is super relaxed. There he is right there. He's got those ears pricked. He's taking everything in. Sunday Silence up on his toes. He couldn't be any better this afternoon. Shug McGahee and Charlie Whittingham might be very different in age, but that's the only difference between them. They're both master trainers and two artistic riders, Pat Day and Chris McCarron. We're in for one super horse race. Sharon? 
Well, Trevor, I've been trying to figure out how different these horses look from the spring when they ran their three great races against each other. And it, it seems like both of them have put on weight and muscle and have grown up a little bit. Sunday Silence, perhaps a little less so than Easy Goer, who has filled out tremendously. I'd be curious to know about the weight that he's put on. Both horses look wonderful. They've both sweated a little, but neither one is upset. So they look equal at this point, at least in terms of looks. Jenny? And if you're not a chalk player, you'll want to find a price here. And maybe Crypto Clearance, currently at 18 to 1, has a shot because, remember, this horse is back on Lasix, and he loves Gulfstream Park. He's done very well here, Crypto Clearance. Also, Western Playboy seems to be back to the form that he was in last spring that won in the Bluegrass Stakes and the Jim Beam. And Western Playboy number 5 is currently 16 to 1. So if you think you can beat these two heavy hitters, you've got some big prices in the three Crypto Clearance and Western Playboy. Dick, it's getting awfully exciting exciting down here. Well, and it's really exciting for those closest to these equine stars, and we see the shots of the owners and the trainers, but those that work their horses in the morning and have so much at stake and care so much and live, they're the exercise riders and grooms that follow Sunday Silence and Easy Goer, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter what the price is and what the uh, the tributes will be or whether or not uh, they're able to go cash a ticket as so many else might be concerned right now it's just that these are animals that they dearly love and are rooting as hard as anyone uh, dick they live with those horses night and day and spend all their time with them and when you say they dearly love them they love them and uh, you know some of the home happy and some of the home very disappointed You had a brief look at Arthur and Stacy Hancock, who own Sunday Silence, at least own a third of him. The horses begin to load into the gate. Easy Goer is in, followed by Present Value and Crypto Clearance. Me Selecto will move in, followed by Western Playboy. No problems at the gate. Three million dollar Breeders' Cup Classic, the world's richest race, the race of the decade. Easy Goer against Sunday Silence. Tom Durkin. Sunday Silence breaks alertly. Easy Goer was off a step slow toward the inside. Slew City Slew, Blushing John and Present Value. And they're passing us now for the first time. Slew City Slew is out to take the early lead now. And he's opened up a quick lead here of two and a half lengths. Blushing John is second down the outside. Present Value is third. Sunday Silence is rating in fourth position. He's six lengths off the lead. Me Selecto is seventh. Four lengths back to Easy Goer. He is ten lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew as they move into the first turn and the trailers are crypto clearance and western playboy slew city slew and he zipped the opening quarter in 22 and two fifth seconds a brazen display of early speed in this mile and a quarter classic Washington John is tracking them as they make their way onto the back stretch now. Sunday Silence poised on the outside third present value to his inside. Then Me Selecto, Easy Goer is yet to do his best running. He is still nine lengths off the lead of Slew City Slew. He's five lengths behind Sunday Silence, and now he's beginning to roll. They've run a half mile in 46 and one fifth seconds. Slew City Slew weakening on the lead. Blushing John has been tracking him all the way. Sunday Silence breaks for the oncoming power of Easy Goer, who's right at his neck, and the stage is set with three furlongs to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Blushing John taking the lead, three-eighths of a mile out. It's Blushing John in front. Sunday Silence on the outside, gearing up now. He's left Easy Goer two and a half lengths behind. They're coming to the top of the stretch, and Blushing John is under a hand ride. He leads by length and a half. Sunday Silence, a threatening presence on the outside. Easy Goer is set down, and he's put to a fierce drive. Coming to the final furlong, Sunday Silence surges to the front. Blushing John trying to fight back. Easy Goer with one final acceleration, and Sunday Silence holds on, and he wins by a desperate neck. Easy Goer was too late, not enough to win it, and it was Sunday Silence in a racing epic. Oh, my. Sunday
Sunday silence and easy goer giving this record crowd all that it could have wanted so often in the big matches. One might be disappointed, but not today. Two great horses finishing at the wire, a half length behind, and Sunday silence takes the rubber match. Three out of four from this colt that wouldn't be bought. It was for sale for $30,000 twice, and no one would pay 20. And today has won $1,350,000 in this race and has $4.6 million third all time. And Chris McCarran, congratulations. McCarran catching his breath as well, I'm sure, on the backside. Chris, did you have any idea as you came to the wire? How close Easy Gore was. Yes, sir, I did. I, I gave a little peek at the 16 pole, and I saw a couple of chestnut legs there, and I knew he was coming, but he raised up on my outside, I think, at the half mile pole, the three, uh, three and a half, and uh, I was very comfortable with where I was, and this Cole, when I set him down, turned for home, he kicked it in really nice. Blushing John gave you all the work you wanted. Blushing John, I had a feeling he'd be tough because he ran some impressive races at Hollywood Park last summer and just didn't fire the other night at the Meadowlands. And I wasn't letting him out of my sight, I tell you that. Well, the fate of racing, racing luck, plays uh, funny favorites today, Chris McCarran, and you've had your share of bad luck today. You get the opportunity to ride this horse for the first time. If you could uh, capture uh, this race in a phrase, what would it be? Well, it was... As I said before, I wish I could have gotten this mile under better circumstances. I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I wish all the best for Pat Valenzuela. He's a good friend and a good kid, and uh, I wish nothing but the best for him. Well, the $3 million classic has won, been won by a classic pair, McCarran aboard Sunday Silence, an easy goer, and Pat Day, a fighting second, not there quite in time. We'll get the reaction of jockeys, owners, and riders when we return to Gulfstream Park, where Sunday Silence has made his bid for Horse of the Year. Saturday cheers for Sunday Silence in Florida, and it's a Breeders' Cup Classic time record, the fastest at this mile and a quarter. And the Breeders' Cup has been run two minutes flat in the fifth for Sunday Silence and Chris McCarran with a final victory salute as uh, he heads back into the jockey quarters. Well, let's go back to the start of the race and it may have been lost in the gate as easy go or slow getting out, Tom. Well, you remember last year in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile when Easy Gore was upset, he was away a little tardily and was pinched back. He does come away a step slow here, but in a mile and a quarter race, he's got plenty of time to get position. And Pat Day now has him running down through the stretch for the first time. He knows that he has a lot of time, and as he probably expected, Slew City Slew has passed him to go on to take the lead. Right now, Sunday Silence number eight has just passed him there on the outside, and frankly, during the running of the race, I was a little surprised that the easy gore was as far away from Sunday Silence. Sunday Silence breaks a little bit to the outside. Chris McCarran steadies him, and then he's put on course. He'll slowly angle his way over to the inside to save a little ground as Blushing John goes on up to lay a little closer to the pace. So right now, McCarran just letting Sunday Silence gallop along, and right behind him is Easy Gore. As the race continued, Sunday Silence would begin to edge his way up, and it seemed to me that Easy Gore was a little slow in doing that. Right now, you see present value on the inside of Sunday Silence as they head into the first turn. Slew City Slew setting the early fractions, and Blushing John is second. Chris McCarran just letting the horse run on his own here. He hasn't asked him to run at all yet, just getting him to relax in the early part of this mile and a quarter race, running right alongside present value. Meantime, the easy goer not in the picture. He's let Sunday Silence get a good distance away from him as they straighten out for the run down the back stretch. Slew City Slew cutting out some pretty swift early fractions, 22 and 2, 46 and 1. And McCarran, if he senses that, knows that Slew City Slew is going to be no problem. He's going to come back to the field. He does have his eye on Blushing John, number seven, who is laying in second place and has dead aim on Slew City Slew as they approach the turn for home. Now, easy goer number one moves outside Sunday Silence, and I thought from here on the two would probably be within a length of each other the rest of the way in the race. But Sunday Silence will have the most acceleration here, and you see him begin to pull away from easy goer and set sail for the leaders. 
Flushing John has taken the lead, and Sunday Silence now passes the tiring Slough City Slough as they come to the top of the stretch. You just saw Angel Cordero look behind him to see if anything was coming, and yes, indeed, Sunday Silence is. Now into the lane, Blushing John under the whip on the inside. Sunday Silence on the outside, and Easy Gore surprisingly has a lot to make up. Sunday Silence now has the lead. McCarran cocks his whip, he sneaks a peek under his arm. There, he looked at Easy Gore. He knows Easy Gore is gaining, but he's got enough horse to last. Trevor. And I'm standing here right now with Pat Day. Pat, you appear to have a little bit of bad luck just after the start. Well, as we come across the, you know, come out of the chute there, uh, my horse looked at the gap and had like he had a, he a tendency to kind of drift in towards it. And uh, I had to grab him, straighten him up. It wasn't anything dramatic, but it uh, cost us some, some position at that point. When you first started to ask him just inside the 3 8 spot, it looked like he took a little while to respond, did he? Yes, it did. We had gotten up into contention uh, in a good spot. I fell like down the backside, just a neck or half a length off of Sunday Silence and, and was content to be there. Uh, when they went ahead and started moving, when Sunday Silence started moving, leaving the 3 8 pole, I wanted to go with him. And my horse, as you said, was just a little bit uh, slow getting started. Once he got started, he came running big. And it was, a, it was a good horse race, a, a magnificent effort on, on Easy Goer's part, and certainly a good performance for Sunday Silence. Gentlemen and a very gracious looter, Pat Day. Let's throw it up to Dick. Well, as we hit it, perhaps that outside post position for Sunday Silence was the difference. Went off at an even two to one and paid six dollars. Easy goer, 220, 210. Blushing John, a game run, gets three dollars for show. And Charlie Whittingham, the winning trainer. It's winner of the Breeders' Cup Classic. And here in the winner's circle with the owners, Arthur Hancock, Charlie Whittingham, Dr. Ernest Gaylord. Arthur Hancock, this is the horse you couldn't sell. He had all kinds of problems. He was in a van accident. Everything else happened. You have to be thankful for that now. Thank God. It was a blessing to all of us. The bitterness over the awarding of the presidency of Claiborne to your younger brother, Seth. Mr. Phipps playing a part in that. Is the bitterness still there? Mr. Phipps was looking after Claiborne's interest. Claiborne's the best farm in the world, and he was my dad's best friend, and he did the right thing. And uh, no, no bitterness at all. And I'm, if I hadn't wanted, I wish they had it. You were sort of the black sheep. You tussled with your father, Bull Hancock, growing up. What would your late father think now? Well, Daddy just kept me straight. I mean, he was a wonderful father. I loved him more than any man on earth, and he would be proud of us, I'm sure. Charlie Whittingham, you never doubted this horse. The talk was easy goer. You never doubted Sunday Silence. Well, one thing, I'm an optimist. And one thing about horsemen is if you're a pessimist, you're not going to get very far, partner. How does he rank among all the great horses you've trained? Well, he's much the best horse I've trained now. He's done more than any horse I've ever trained, and he isn't through yet. He's just getting going. Chris McCarran, I'll sneak over here and ask you a question. You had a pretty confident ride. Uh, did you have an eye on Easy Goer all the way? Um, well, I, I think that was him that reigns up on the outside of me at the three and a half. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, but I looked back and saw a couple of chestnut legs, and uh, I figured it had to be him. And uh, so I just went ahead and moved my hands on the colt a little bit, and he responded very well, and he kind of got away from that horse on the outside. And I didn't want to let Blushing John get too far away from me either because he ran some powerful race at Hollywood last summer and I, okay. he impressed me. Great ride, Chris. Now for the presentation, let's go to Alan E. Murray, chairman of the sponsoring Mobile Corporation. Alan, step in here. Uh, on behalf of Mobile, I'm delighted to be part of this great event when the, we obviously just discovered who Horse of the Year was, don't we? I mean, there's no, no more doubt, is there? It's who's horse of the sure year? I don't think so myself. That's a great race. Right. Right. Absolutely, truly magnificent. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, it's a unanimous uh, decision down here. It is a horse of the year to Sunday Silence after the win in the Classic. We'll be back to Gulfstream Park in just a moment. And you heard As night falls on an exciting Saturday of racing here in Southern Florida, Sunday Silence, Easy Gore, the good news, you heard Charlie Whittingham, it's just begun. We're liable to see these two at four-year-olds in the Breeders' Cup at Belmont Park next year. Sunday Silence and Easy Gore continue to race. Blushing John, Crescent Value, Crypto Clearance, the early pace setter, Slew City Slew, Western Playboy, me, Selecto, the order of finish. Tom? Dick, I, if uh, Chris McCarran is the happiest jockey at Gulfstream Park, his brother Greg has got to be the second happiest. Uh, that was some race. Tom, I'm telling you, I hate to sound like a homer, but I don't think it could have been a better finish. I'm telling you, it was terrific. I mean to tell you, it was wild. Is there any question about Horse of the Year? I'll tell you what, uh, there'll be some questions because the New York people are pretty strong and they're certainly going to vote for Easy Go or Over Sunday Silence, but no question in my mind, there's only one Horse of the Year, and that's Sunday Silence. Well, I think Easy Gore is a tremendous racehorse, which makes... The victory by Sunday Silence even more impressive. He certainly is my horse of the year, Dick. 